if you want to be a very good javascript developer you have to be excellent in dev tools now if you ask me how you can get into dev tools then i will recommend don't waste your time by watching this video just get lost and help the economy if you are very familiar with jquery you have the habit to get anything by using the dollar sign class the id whatever you have now for some reason if you don't have access to jquery you can do pretty much similar thing with dollar sign you can pass your tag name and you will get the elements this is actually same as document dot query selector and if you pass the query selector and the same query you will get exactly the same thing problem with query selector is that it only returns the first element of the match if you want to get all the elements for certain match you can send the tag or the css to the query selector all and you will get everything for this match and you can check the length for this match is 4 if you are lazy and you don't want to type document.querySelector all you can simply pass your tag to double dollar a and you will get the things you need and you can check the length is exactly 4 number two problem is whatever i have in the console if i reload or refresh the page everything in the console is lost but sometimes i need those even if i reload the page to solve this problem if i right click here and select preserve log upon navigation now if i log anything here for example console log hold this baby doesn't matter how many times i reload the page whatever in the console stays console number three is fun if i want to change anything on a document i can simply go to the developers tool and type document dot body dot content editable is equals to true if i set is true and if i come to the page this page becomes just an editor i can do whatever i want to do here i can select some text here and remove it or even if i don't like the name that js dude i can change it to js buddy very simple number four is very important if i want to log multiple stuff what i do i give it a name like window and i put a plus sign and type the window what i want to log the problem is that it gives me object dot window i have no clue what the heck is this so i try to solve this problem by json and stingify but you don't have to do all this stuff just change the plus with a comma now you will have the object on it and you can expand it you can see all this stuff you can add as much things as you want by comma for example you want to add the body here you can simply document dot body and you will get everything you need and you can expand it and you can navigate all these different places number five is very important if you want to know what are the events tied to an elements you can simply know it i have a text input here if i want to see the elements here for example if you remember it's dollar and the id of my in text box is my input so i have this input here now i want to know what are the events tied to these dom elements this is very simple get event listeners and you pass the elements to this function in my case my input and if i pass it it will simply tell me what are the events tied to this DOM. Here is click, focus, and keep up. So I don't have to go through all the files, documents I have, all the libraries, Angular, Ember, Backbone, to know what are the events tied to this element. I can simply call get event listeners. It will give me all the event listeners. Now, number six is even harder. I want to debug a problem so I want to know what are the events are fired if I do something click or type something in this input box you can do same thing here if you call the function monitor events and pass the elements and in the same would be my input and if you pass this function now all the events would be logged here if you want to check it for example if you move the mouse towards it you will see mouse move and if you click you will have click and so many things if you keep typing you will have text input key up key press all this one this is getting flooded and messy 
you don't want to get logged all the events because you have a specific need if we want to get rid of all this stuff we will simply reload the page and everything would be gone now if we simply pass the events we want to monitor we can for, for example here pass the click name of the events now whenever i click on the input text box the events is logged and you can check what are the parameters here and if you keep clicking every time it would be locked now if you want to monitor more than one events you can pass an array to this function and you you can log like key up you can log on blog and uh, when you pass this array whenever you click on this you will get the function logged and whenever you key up you will get the log and if you blog you will get the function logged this is very helpful. Now, this has another problem. Even if you are done with debugging and you want to do something else, browsers keep logging all the events to this input. If you want to stop monitoring all these events, you can call unmonitor events. And that's how the browser will stop monitoring and you will pass the elements to this function and the elements is my input. And when you are done with this, Whatever you do and you change anything, you click, you blur, browser doesn't log events anymore. Number seven is to measure the time. Console has a function called time and you can pass a label to it. For example, my time and console will start a timer. And when you are done, you can call the console time in that will stop the timer. And if you pass the same label and you will get the time spent in between is 9 second which is 9000 millisecond this becomes very useful for example if i have something like this when i started the time my loop with label and i do some looping and after that i say like time end with the same label and if i execute this function i will see this take 86 millisecond to execute this for loop number eight is grouping log in the console so for example if you have a for loop and you are running it for example for 50 times and after that uh, you are doing something here and uh, you can do console log and there's other things you can do console info you can do console warn you can console error and if you do error and you just pass i and what it does it does 50 elements in the log and sometimes it becomes so big and you have to scroll too many things so if you want to collapse all these things you can easily collapse those and what you can do before this function you can say like console and you can say like group collapse and you can give it a, a nice name is like my error and when all the console is done you can say like console and group end so if the group is in now, all the error is collapsed inside whatever name you have given. And if you expand it, you will get all the bad thing you did to this program. Number nine is my most favorite one. If I have a collection or an array and its name could be my array and equals to an array of object and it could be a1, b2, c3 and I copy this one and make multiple of this. So I keep pasting and also I add another one that might have extra properties say D, T, 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 T and I could have another one. It could have another property like K, K, K and value of this K, K, K is Sheldon and I have this array. Now if I want to see the elements of an array, I can simply call my array. I can expand everyone separately and see what are the property. And this doesn't becomes very helpful if I have a lot of objects. I can easily do console and dot table and if I pass my array and you will see the magic. And you can see that for the first one, the value of A, value of B, value of C and the fourth one doesn't have value of C and uh, the third one has the extra property D, rest of is undefined. Number 10 is very interesting one. If you have some crazy expression, you want to do something with it and uh, you evaluate it now if you want to do something with this uh, result you don't want to type this expression again and again you can access the last result by typing dollar underscore it's simply the value now you can square this outcome by dollar underscore dollar underscore and now after this evaluation dollar underscore is 
not anymore this value it becomes this value if you have to check it you can verify dollar underscore is the last outcome now if you want to do some math dot square root or something like this with dollar underscore you see you exactly get back to this value number 11 is if you want to clear the console you can call this function clear and this will clear it or if you have something messy and you want to clean it you can press shortcut key ctrl l for windows and mac has command something number 12 is call stack if you want to get call stack at any point of time you can console trace and it, it will give you the trace of the call stack number 13 is count you want to count how many times a function is hit for example if you have a function and uh, name foo and inside the foo you want to see how many times this was hit and you can simply console count and say something is food that's all now if you call foo you see the food one if you call again foo two foo three and every time you hit this one you will get how many times the function was hit number 14 is about profiling you can start profiling in the console tab you can give it a name aaa and it will start profiling and when the profiling is done you do something here you can say like profile end and you can pass the same name and when you pass the same name profile will be ended and you if you go to the profile tab you will see a profile is started and you can see what are the things done inside this profiling number 15 if you remember the dollar and you can pass any css selectors in my case is my input and you will get the tag now if you want to see the properties on this one you can use this div or directory and pass the element to it and this could be my input and this will give you all the properties in the object here you can check it number 16 is in inspect if you want to inspect any of the elements you can start the inspection from here if i want to do my input once again and hit the inspect it will take me towards the element tab element would be selected and you will see all the style this becomes very handy when i have tons of stuff and i want to inspect very specific one for example i have tons of anchor and i want to inspect number three so i will pass the item here i don't have to go through the dom and find out who is number three i just do it and browser with itself highlighted the third one here number 17 is very useful if you want to see the last selected elements in the dom and you can simply dollar zero that will give you the last one and if you go dollar one that would be second to the last and two would be the third to the last and you can go up to dollar four now let's do a quick summary of the stuff we talked today if you pass any of the css selectors to dollar you will get the first one of them if you pass to double dollar function you will get all the selected elements if you use dollar underscore you will get the last executed expression in this case would be the all the anchor tag i have if you want to preserve whatever in the console at the time of reload or navigate you can right click and select preserve log upon navigation the most important thing we talked today is related to the events and if i create a variable with my favorite element of the day and this is my input it becomes easier and if i want to see whatever the events tied to this element i can use get event listener and pass the elements this will simply tell me the click focus and key up if i want to monitor any of the events to this element i will pass the elements and name of the event i want to monitor if i want to monitor more than one i can pass an array of the events name and i could have focus blah 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 to this one and when i am done with monitoring i can call unmonitor events to this element and browser will stop monitoring the events.